Here are the five ways that women compete in the dating market. Let's talk about it. I think we all know at this point that women are very competitive. It is not a social construct or a result of culture. It is a deeply ingrained biological instinct because every woman is in competition with every other woman since there's a limited number of high quality men that they can mate with. You see, back in the day, the competitions were limited because there was a clear price. For example, there is a top men or a top group of men that women would compete for. Once that top men or that top group of men have found their partners, the competition was essentially over. However, in this day and age, with the invention of social media, it seems like there's an unlimited number of high quality men. So the competitions never really stop. Okay, let's talk about the first one, self-improvement and self-promotion. Improving yourself is the most straightforward method of increasing your value in the dating market. You can try to be the most beautiful girl with the previous phase and the best body. And you can promote yourself by smiling, flirting, flicking your hair, showing off your body. You know, you can tell the guys that you have won a beauty contest with millions of followers on Instagram. These are all strategies to show the guys that you are desirable and attractive as a mating prospect. Self-improvement is also a very efficient way of increasing your value because you're not only attracting the guys, you're also improving your life. One other good thing about self-improvement is that it gives you plausible deniability. If other women accuse you of competing for male attention, you can always deny it and say, oh no, like the reason why I go to the gym, the reason why I work out, the reason why I wear makeup, the reason why I wear these nice clothes is that's just the way I express myself, you know, for my own self-esteem. And perhaps there's some truth to that. But any woman who would accuse you of competing for male attention would just appear insecure. Now, the second way of competing is to degrade your competition. This is when you spread negative qualities about other women. The goal here is to remove your competitions so that you are the only one left to get all the male attention. You can say something like, did you see how fat she is? Or did you know that she's turning 35 this year? Or did you know that she slept with 30 guys in high school? These comments speak directly to a lot of men's fear when it comes to choosing a partner. Oh my God, maybe she has no self-control. Oh my God, maybe she is too old to have a child. Oh my God, maybe she is too promiscuous and more likely to cheat on me. Now, if you're a guy watching this and you might be thinking, women don't say these things. This is, these things are horrible to say. And yes, you are right. These accusations are very direct and very blunt. Over time, women have become very subtle when criticizing other women. The reason for this is because she knows that the moment the guy realizes what she's doing, she's going to look very insecure and petty. And if other women find out, they're going to call her out and essentially ruin her chance of getting with all the other men. So she's not going to make it obvious at all when criticizing other women. Instead of saying, oh, did you see how fat she is? She might say something like, oh, she's so brave and confident in her own body. Instead of saying, did you know that she slept with 30 guys in high school? She might say something like, I was really jealous of her in high school. She was really fun and wild and all the guys loved her. Do you see the subtlety in these comments? She was still able to get the message across, but the way she was putting it, as if she was rooting for them, as if they were on the same side. Next, we have manipulating your competition. The goal of this strategy is to convince other women that the man is not worth pursuing, or it would take too much time and effort to pursue him. The cost to pursue him is essentially too high. For example, a woman might be really interested in a guy, but she talks him down to all of her female friends so that they don't find him attractive anymore. And when there's no competition left, she can just swoop in and take the guy. This strategy, however, is less common because it goes against pre-selection. Part of the appeal of being with a high quality man is that you can be the envy of all your friends. To a woman, a man is only perceived as high value only if other women find him attractive. A more effective variation from the strategy is to convince other women that the cost to pursuing him is essentially too high. It would take too much time and effort to pursue him. For example, she might say something like, oh, he's out of our league. He's too good for us. A guy like him would never go out for someone like us. It would be a waste of our time. Or she can say something even more powerful and threatening. For example, 
she can say something like, oh, I've heard so-and-so are interested in him. So she's not going to be happy if she finds out that you're going after her man. Now, this is incredibly powerful because it triggers a genuine survival fear in women, a fear of isolation, a fear of being ostracized. Throughout evolution, women have a very strong instinct to conform to the group. Back in the day, if you were to be kicked out of the tribe, who's going to provide for you? Who's going to protect you? Social isolation back in the day could mean death. Now, I know that we don't live in tribal days anymore, but that biological fear of being socially ostracized still exists. So if a woman is threatened with social isolation for going after someone else's property, she's going to keep up the chase. What if this strategy doesn't work? What if she fails to convince other women from pursuing her man? What then? Well, that brings me to my next point, which is to remove the need for competition. This strategy targets the man himself. The goal here is to remove the man from the dating market so there's no need for competition. This is often used by women who don't think that they can outcompete other women. Maybe she has low self-esteem. Maybe she is not as pretty. Maybe she is not as fit. In this case, her goal is to keep the man away from all of her other competitors. We see this quite often in mentally abusive relationships where the woman is in complete control. For example, take a woman who is really insecure. Every time her man goes out to a party, a work meeting, some sort of social events, she gets really anxious and terrified by the fact that he might meet someone else who is better than her. What usually happens here is that she's going to try to guilt him into thinking that he's a bad person for not wanting to spend time with her. This way, she is preventing him from wanting to go out in the first place. However, if he still wants to go out, in that case, she's going to create some sort of crisis at home, call him up, and then say, oh my God, everything is falling apart. I'm so sad, I don't know what to do. Can you please come home and help me? She is essentially removing him from the arena so that he can't spend time with anyone else. So you can see over months or even years of doing this, the man eventually is not going to have a social life anymore. And because he's been kept at home, he doesn't know that there are other options available to him. At that point, she was successful because she has eliminated her need for competition. The last one I want to talk about is undercutting your competition. This is a huge one. By undercut, I mean being more sexually available. To fully understand my point, you first need to understand currency in the dating market. I made an entire video about this topic. You should definitely check it out. I'm going to link it over here. But essentially, women are in control of sex and men are in control of commitment. Both parties can set the price for what they have to offer. Women can say, in order to sleep with me, you need to do this, this, and this. Or you need to have this, this, and this. Typically, it involves some sort of commitment or relationship. On the other hand, men have the ultimate control when it comes to commitment. So they can also set the price for their commitment. Typically, it's support, respect, and a healthy sex life. Now, what happens if a woman decides to undercut her competitor? She can say that she's not going to sleep with any man unless the man is willing to give her a certain level of commitment. But what if she's not attractive? What if she's not as pretty? What if she's not as fit? Then it's just a matter of time before she starts to drop her standards. By doing this, she'll discover that she can get a lot more male attention if she lowers her price and start offering sex to men without expecting any commitment in return. Now, I want you to understand something. For all women across the board, it will be ideal to keep sex at a very high and fixing price because you want to convince men that what you have to offer is very valuable and worth a high level of commitment. But in reality, not all women think that way. You see, if there's somebody out there offering sex for free, that would directly undermine all the other women's effort of keeping the value of sex really high. That one individual is acting for their own selfish interest. She doesn't care about anyone else. Maybe because she knows that she'll never be as attractive or as pretty as other women. So she competes in another way by undercutting them in price. All it takes is one person to break before the next one sees the benefit and start doing the same thing. So you see, this arrangement of keeping the value of sex really high will eventually break down. You see, by the looks of it, 
promiscuous women seems like they're just making their own decision. They're, you know, it's their body, their own choice. They do whatever they want and it doesn't really affect anyone else. But in reality, their actions have a huge impact on other women because by lowering the value of sex, they are essentially reducing the value of what other women have to offer. This is the reason why there's so much stigma surrounding promiscuous women. So much so that we have the term slut shaming. Research has shown that women actually slut shame each other more often than men. And it makes perfect sense because you see, they are in direct competition with each other. While everyone is trying to keep the value of sex really high all across the board, you can't really stop any one individual from undercutting in price. So slut shaming is a way of preventing these individuals from wanting to be promiscuous. To take this a step further, we see that a lot of women who work for the adult entertainment industry receive a lot of stigma from other women. Think of how many times you hear a girlfriend complaining about her boyfriend for watching pornography. That is because the girlfriend is in direct competition with those women on screen. Those women are taking off their clothes and showing off their bodies without asking anything in return. They are essentially reducing the value of what the girlfriend has to offer. In this case, the girlfriend is being constantly undercut. From YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, to OnlyFans, Tinder, and maybe even texting, everywhere you see, women feel this constant pressure of lowering their price just to stay in the competition. As a final thought, I want to leave you with this. If all of this was true, if this was the state of our society, that women nowadays feel the, the constant need to lowering their price in order to stay in the dating market. Wouldn't we be living in a male's paradise? The answer is no, because men also compete with other men. To understand how men compete with other men, watch this video here. Till next time, stay curious.